Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Han and welcome back to another Minecraft video and today we are gonna make Minecraft renders. So this is just a beginner tutorial for you guys. So if you want to make image like this or something similar, I make a mummy and I made so much more other renders on my Twitter. Be sure to follow there. And this model is provided by the Luna Studio is Han KBG. So Links will be down in the description below to their website, to their Discord server if you want to join them. They have such a cool add-ons that you can play with. And yeah, let's go to the tutorial. So we're gonna go to the blockbench.net. This is the page right here. And what you want to do is... I'm gonna close this thing. Okay, we're gonna open the web version of this blockbench. So it's web.blockbench.net if you want to go here directly. Okay, so we're gonna open this blockbench. We're not gonna make the models here. I'm just gonna use the model that my friend provided me. Okay, so I'm gonna close the full screen. I have downloaded the model as JSON. So I'm just gonna drag it right there. And yeah, it works and just right click to pan around scroll so what you want first before you head into blender is actually try to post this thing so i'm gonna try to post where its mouth is open because when we are posting in blockbench it's still in groups like this while inside of blender it's no longer looks like this so we have to post it here Okay, so that's the upper part. And also we're gonna import the image, just drag it over as the texture. Here we go, we can see the model, it's very cool. So we're gonna move the mouth a little bit lower so it's rotating. It's a little bit too low, but okay. So the trick here is to move the head a little bit higher. Arms, we just need the head. Okay, so I used the wrong tool, sorry. Just to move. Move it forward a little bit. And just a little bit down. Hold shift so it's you can move it a little bit more precisely. I think that's good so in my original render I moved it a little bit higher the mouth and I put the hands up but I think I used that pose a lot so I'm gonna have to change uh, okay so its body is already rotated forward it's that's a cool thing okay let's move the hands a little bit so we got left arms here. Just gonna rotate it a little bit. And the other arms. So it's like in a ready state. Okay, so the chains are actually separate image. That's very cool. I'm gonna rotate the image of the chain because it's physics. And you want physics to happen here because it's, it's a render. Alright, so chains is down there. The other one is swinging up there. I think it's good. For this model that it's this big and very detailed, you don't have to do very much, but for a smaller and thinner model like the mummy that I post on my Twitter, it's also by the Luna Item Studio. It's I will credit the creator on the screen right now, and I'm gonna file, okay, I'm gonna export into the OBJ model, because this is the most universal ways of doing models and renders. Okay, it's gonna download it as a zip 
you will need a WinRAR or any types of archiver for this. I'm gonna use my default arc archiver. I'm gonna extract every single part of this. So I think I'm gonna export it just in downloads. Yeah, just on downloads. There we go. We have everything the OBJ, the PNG, and the material. So we're gonna import this too. The way we're doing it is go into Blender. So, oh, okay, yeah, I still have files here. Just gonna delete, delete all these useless things. And you're gonna file, import, and go to Wavefront OBJ. And after that, you're gonna import the file. And you look here, everything is on separate object. Now, we don't want that for simplicity. Just gonna click on one object there and press B and then hold and drag. Now every part of there is selected. Also the light is selected, so I'm gonna hold shift and click and click again to deselect that. And then you can finally join everything. So I'm gonna uh, shift and then click on the body so it focuses on there and I'm gonna control J to combine everything into one object. I'm gonna press zero on my numpad to go into the camera view. I'm gonna rotate my models so it face the camera. I'm gonna grab with pressing G and shift Z and move it around, okay? And then you can use R to rotate it by the way. So there's much shortcuts that you can learn on Blender, but the basic one is G to move or grab, X to delete, and then rotate, and is R. You can press R, R to rotate and press Z to rotate in the Z axis, and press R and X to X axis, and R and Y for the Y axis. And the other cool things, if you press grab and then let's go to the camera view and if you grab and then press z it will move in the z axis and if you press z again it will move into its local local z axis as you can see here and then there's s for scaling and i think that's about it b for box select that's mostly everything that you're gonna need for this tutorial right now and if you want to learn more about the shortcuts there's gonna be on the Blender website if you want to take a look at and I'm just gonna move the light around to see if which one works better now the problem we encountered right away is that the textures are blurry it's like a PS1 game so we're gonna go into the shading parts here and then what will this open is the layout you can actually go into this and just you know drag from here and then change this into a note editor but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna use it this one okay it's just the same thing oh by the way if you if your model doesn't look like this you might have to change the render settings right here okay so the blender version I'm using is 2.8 that has the newest feature this is the newest feature the render so it's the EV renderer is so fast and cost less memory Alright, so we click on this Cyclops right here. We're gonna move it here a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in so you guys can see. This is the node editor. Now we have to modify this. First, change the filtering option to closest. Wait for a second for it to load and now it's on pixel art. It's very crisp. But another problem we encountered is that transparent textures like the chain doesn't really work. Now how do we fix this is basically we're gonna create an alpha shaders. So we're gonna search for transparent. So it's gonna transparent shader and we need to combine this with the regular shader. Okay, so I'm gonna shift add and then mix shader. And then make sure it's connected to the lines right there and put this one right around there. So basically this one is a transparent object and this one is a solid object that will be rendered. So I'm gonna move this alpha into the factor. Okay. Wait for a second. If the result is like this, then you probably put it the wrong way around. So I'm gonna swap it over. 
Now that's a little bit better, but still black. So we're gonna go into the objects material and we're gonna blend mode into alpha clip. We'll see again the result. Now it's the transparent textures that is working. So anyway, this is the basic, the most basic setup that I would do for a render. You can click render and render image immediately and you will see the result of it. And it's very basic, nothing much. This is not interesting at all. So first thing, what you should do is you have, you must have a plane for a floor. So I'm gonna hold shift and then press A. I'm gonna bring this to the menu and click on plane, scale and press 12 and there you go you have a floor and then you're gonna create a new material so this is the tab where you put the material and you can just add one and just change the color I think it fits so well with this red color let's see okay okay let's reposition this a little bit there we go now one other things you can do is you can add bloom and ambient occlusion. So bloom is basically it's like glowy things right here you can see. So it's a little bit glowing there, but it's just uh, like reflection. For this one we don't really need the bloom because nothing is glowing. I'm gonna use the ambient occlusion though. Okay, so ambient occlusion is now turned on. We need to put it inside of our shader. Okay, so we're gonna combine another one from here. We're gonna add ambient occlusion, and then we're gonna combine it with the texture. So let's combine here and mix RGB instead of mix shader. Okay, so we're gonna put it right there, so you can see the connection right here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. So this is what the setup looks like. I'm gonna grab this color, the yellow one, drag it into the mix. And then the factor should be ambient occlusion. And then if we move down a little bit, it's the other way around, so if you can like, go swap in the colors, give it a little bit of time to load. Now as you can see there's white random things, that's because the ambient occlusion is white, instead it should be black. So we're gonna go, go down, all the way down, so it gives this little shadowy effects, but it's not actually shadow. And it's very cheap to do, and it brings a lot of parts to do it. Okay, so one last thing before we hit render on this thing is we're gonna go into this. Uh, okay, let's go into the this tab here, the render properties. Go down and go into film, and make it transparent. If you want to render it, this, this will render as PNG with transparency. So you can edit and add some more into on Photoshop later on if you want to. So if you want to like just, just render the model and give it outline and then re-render this, this floor again with the shadow, you can do that. And another thing you can do is color management here. If you want to change the exposure or the gamma, you can do anything. But it's not very advanced like in Photoshop. So I suggest after you, after you hit the render image, you move this into Photoshop and you add some text, add some more color post-processing later on and add some cool stuff later on. And yeah, basically that. So this will make a great render. If you want to post it on your Twitter, you can be proud of this. And you can just share this anywhere else, your video. So yeah. if. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Han and I will see you guys next time. So welcome to the end screen and by the way I have switched into Linux lately so it's a little bit different for me to work on that has cost me a lot of time to configure everything.
and glad you guys made it to the end screen here. See you guys next time.